Steven Allen Spielberg is an American filmmaker. He is considered one of the founding pioneers of the New Hollywood era and one of the most popular directors and producers in film history. Spielberg started in Hollywood directing television and several minor theatrical releases. He became a household name as the director of Jaws, which was critically and commercially successful and is considered the first summer blockbuster. His subsequent releases focused typically on science fiction slash adventure films such as Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Raiders of the Lost Ark, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, and Jurassic Park, which became archetypes of modern Hollywood escapist filmmaking. Spielberg transitioned into addressing serious issues in his later work with The Color Purple, Empire of the Sun, Schindler's List, Amistad, and Saving Private Ryan, he has largely adhered to this practice during the 21st century, with Munich, Lincoln, Bridge of Spies, and The Post. He co-founded Amblin Entertainment and DreamWorks Studios, where he has also served as a producer or executive producer for several successful film trilogies, tetralogies, and more including The Gremlins, Back to the Future, Men in Black, and The Transformers series. He later transitioned into producing several video games. Spielberg is one of the American film industry's most critically successful filmmakers, with praise for his directing talent and versatility, and he has won the Academy Award for Best Director twice. Some of his movies are also among the highest-grossing films, while his total work makes him the highest-grossing film director in history. His net worth is estimated to be more than $3 billion, Spielberg was born on December 18, 1946, in Cincinnati, Ohio. His mother, Leah, was a restaurateur and concert pianist, and his father, Arnold Spielberg, was an electrical engineer involved in the development of computers. His family was Orthodox Jewish. Spielberg's paternal grandparents were Jewish-Russian immigrants who settled in Cincinnati in the 1900s, his grandmother was from Sudelkiv, while his grandfather was from Kamionets In 1950, his family moved to Haddon Township, New Jersey, when his father took a job with RCA. Three years later, the family moved to Phoenix, Arizona 548 Spielberg attended Hebrew school from 1953 to 1957, in classes taught by Rabbi Albert L. Lewis. As a child, Spielberg faced difficulty reconciling being an Orthodox Jew with the perception of him by other children he played with. It isn't something I enjoy admitting, he once said, but when I was seven, eight, nine years old, God forgive me, I was embarrassed because we were Orthodox Jews. I was embarrassed by the outward perception of my parents' Jewish practices. I was never really ashamed to be Jewish, but I was uneasy at times. Spielberg also said he suffered from acts of anti-Semitic prejudice and bullying. In high school, I got smacked and kicked around. Two bloody noses. It was horrible. At age 12, he made his first home movie, The Train Wreck involving his toy Lionel Trains. Throughout his early teens, and after entering high school, Spielberg continued to make amateur, 8mm, adventure films. In 1958, he became a Boy Scout and fulfilled a requirement for the Photography Merit Badge by making a 9-minute, 8 mm film entitled The Last Gunfight. Years later, Spielberg recalled to a magazine interviewer, My dad's still camera was broken, so I asked the Scoutmaster if I could tell a story with my father's movie camera. He said yes, and I got an idea to do a western. I made it and got my Merit Badge. That was how it all started. At age 13, while living in Phoenix, Spielberg won a prize for a 40-minute war film he titled Escape to Nowhere, using a cast composed of other high school friends. That motivated him to make 15 more amateur, 8mm films, 548. Some of the films he cited as early influences that he grew up watching include the Godzilla Kaiju film King of the Monsters, which he called the most masterful of all the dinosaur movies because it made you believe it was really happening, as well as titles such as Captain's Courageous, Pinocchio, and particularly Lawrence of Arabia, which he cited as the film that set me on my journey. In 1963, 
At age 16, Spielberg wrote and directed his first independent film, a 140-minute science fiction adventure called Firelight, which would later inspire Close Encounters. The film was made for $500, most of which came from his father, and was shown in a local cinema for one evening, which earned back its cost. After attending Arcadia High School in Phoenix for three years, his family next moved to Saratoga, California, where he later graduated from Saratoga High School in 1965. He attained the rank of Eagle Scout. His parents divorced while he was still in school, and, soon after, he graduated. Spielberg moved to Los Angeles, staying initially with his father. His long-term goal was to become a film director. His three sisters and mother remained in Saratoga. In Los Angeles, he applied to the University of Southern California's film school but was turned down because of his C-grade average 548. He then applied and was admitted to California State University, Long Beach where he became a brother of Beta Chi fraternity. Spielberg attended Brookdale Community College for his undergrad. While still a student, he was offered a small, unpaid, intern job at Universal Studios with the editing department. He was later given the opportunity to make a short film for theatrical release, the 26-minute, 35mm Amblin, which he wrote and directed. Studio Vice President Sidney Scheinberg was impressed by the film, which had won a number of awards, and offered Spielberg a seven-year directing contract. It made him the youngest director ever to be signed for a long-term deal with a major Hollywood studio 548. He subsequently dropped out of college to begin professionally directing TV productions with Universal, Spielberg later returned to California State University, Long Beach, and completed his BA degree in Film and Electronic Arts in 2002. His first professional TV job came when he was hired to direct one of the segments for the 1969 pilot episode of Night Gallery, written by Rod Sorling and starring Joan Crawford. Crawford, however, was speechless and then horrified at the thought of a 21-year-old newcomer directing her, one of Hollywood's leading stars. Why was this happening to me? She asked the producer. Her attitude changed after they began working on her scenes. When I began to work with Steven, I understood everything. It was immediately obvious to me, and probably everyone else, that here was a young genius. I thought maybe more experience was important, but then I thought of all of those experienced directors who didn't have Steven's intuitive inspiration and who just kept repeating the same old routine performances. That was called experience. Based on the strength of his work, Universal signed Spielberg to do four TV films. The first was a Richard Matheson adaptation called Duel. The film is about a psychotic Peterbilt 281 tanker truck driver who chases the terrified driver of a small Plymouth Valiant and tries to run him off the road. Special praise of this film by the influential British critic Dillys Powell was highly significant to Spielberg's career. Another TV film was made and released to capitalize on the popularity of The Exorcist, then a major best-selling book which had not yet been released as a film. He fulfilled his contract by directing the TV film-length pilot of a show called Savage, starring Martin Landau. Spielberg's debut full-length feature film was The Sugarland Express, about a married couple who are chased by police as the couple tries to regain custody of their baby. Spielberg's cinematography for the police chase was praised by reviewers, and The Hollywood Reporter stated that a major new director is on the horizon 223 however, the film fared poorly at the box office and received a limited release. Studio producers Richard D. Zanuck and David Brown offered Spielberg the director's chair for Jaws, a thriller horror film based on the Peter Benchley novel about an enormous killer shark. Spielberg has often referred to the grueling shoot as his professional crucible. Despite the film's ultimate, enormous success, it was nearly shut down due to delays and budget overruns. But Spielberg persevered and finished the film. It was an enormous hit, winning three Academy Awards and grossing more than $470 million worldwide at the box office. It also set the domestic record for box office gross, 
leading to what the press described as Jaws Mania 248 Jaws made Spielberg a household name and one of America's youngest multi-millionaires, allowing him a great deal of autonomy for his future projects 250 It was nominated for Best Picture and featured Spielberg's first of three collaborations with actor Richard Dreyfuss. Rejecting offers to direct Jaws 2, King Kong, and Superman, Spielberg, and actor Richard Dreyfuss reconvened to work on a film about UFOs, which became Close Encounters of the Third Kind. One of the rare films, both written and directed by Spielberg, Close Encounters was a critical and box office hit, giving Spielberg his first Best Director nomination from the Academy as well as earning six other Academy Awards nominations. It won Oscars, in two categories. This second blockbuster helped to secure Spielberg's rise. His next film, 1941, a big-budgeted World War II farce, was not nearly as successful and though it grossed over $92.4 million worldwide it was seen as a disappointment, mainly with the critics. Spielberg then revisited his Close Encounters project and, with financial backing from Columbia Pictures, released Close Encounters, the special edition in 1980. For this, Spielberg fixed some of the flaws he thought impeded the original 1977 version of the film and also, at the behest of Columbia, and as a condition of Spielberg revising the film, shot additional footage showing the audience the interior of the mothership seen at the end of the film. Nevertheless, the rare release was a moderate success, while the 2001 DVD release of the film restored the original ending. Next. Spielberg teamed with Star Wars creator and friend George Lucas on an action-adventure film, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the first of the Indiana Jones films. The archaeologist and adventurer hero Indiana Jones was played by Harrison Ford. The film was considered an homage to the cliffhanger serials of the golden age of Hollywood. It became the biggest film at the box office in 1981, and the recipient of numerous Oscar nominations, including Best Director and Best Picture. Raiders is still considered a landmark example of the action-adventure genre. The film also led to Ford's casting in Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. A year later, Spielberg returned to the science fiction genre with E.T. The Extraterrestrial. It was the story of a young boy and the alien he befriends who was accidentally left behind by his companions and is attempting to return home. E.T. went on to become the top-grossing film of all time. It was also nominated for nine Academy Awards including Best Picture and Best Director, winning four of them. Between 1982 and 1985, Spielberg produced three high-grossing films, Poltergeist, a big-screen adaptation of The Twilight Zone, and The Goonies. Spielberg appeared in a cameo on Cindy Lauper's music video for the movie's theme song, The Goonies Are Good Enough. His next directorial feature was the Raiders prequel Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Teaming up once again with Lucas and Ford, the film was plagued with uncertainty for the material and script. This film and the Spielberg-produced Gremlins led to the creation of the PG-13 rating due to the high level of violence in films targeted at younger audiences. In spite of this, Temple of Doom is rated PG by the MPA8, even though it is the darkest and, possibly, most violent indie film. Nonetheless, the film was still a huge blockbuster hit in 1984. It was on this project that Spielberg also met his future wife actress, Kate Capshaw. In 1985, Spielberg released The Color Purple, an adaptation of Alice Walker's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel of the same name, about a generation of empowered African-American women during Depression-era America. Starring Whoopi Goldberg and future talk show superstar Oprah Winfrey, the film was a box office smash and critics hailed Spielberg's successful foray into the dramatic genre. Roger Ebert proclaimed it the best film of the year and later entered it into his great film's archive. The film received 11 Academy Award nominations, including two for Goldberg and Winfrey. However, Spielberg did not get a Best Director nomination. In 1987, as China began opening to Western capital investment, Spielberg shot the first American film in Shanghai since the 1930s, an adaptation of Jane. Ballard's autobiographical novel, Empire of the Sun, 
starring John Malkovich and a young Christian Bale. The film garnered much praise from critics and was nominated for several Oscars, but did not yield substantial box office revenues. Reviewer Andrew Saris called it the best film of the year and later included it among the best films of the decade. Spielberg was also a co-producer of the 1987 film Asterisk Batteries Not Included. After two forays into more serious dramatic films, Spielberg then directed the third Indiana Jones film, 1989's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Once again teaming up with Lucas and Ford, Spielberg also cast actor Sean Connery in his supporting role as Indy's father. The film earned generally positive reviews and was another box office success, becoming the highest grossing film worldwide that year, its total box office receipts even topped those of Tim Burton's much anticipated film Batman, which had been the bigger hit domestically. Also in 1989, he reunited with actor Richard Dreyfuss for the romantic comedy drama Always, about a daredevil pilot who extinguishes forest fires. Spielberg's first romantic film, Always was only a moderate success and had mixed reviews. In 1991, Spielberg directed Hook, about a middle-aged Peter Pan, played by Robin Williams, who returns to Neverland. Despite innumerable rewrites and creative changes coupled with mixed reviews, the film proved popular with audiences, making over $300 million worldwide. In 1993, Spielberg returned to the adventure genre with the film version of Michael Crichton's novel Jurassic Park, about a theme park with genetically engineered dinosaurs. With revolutionary special effects provided by friend George Lucas's Industrial Light and Magic Company, the film would eventually become the highest-grossing film of all time with $914.7 million. This would be the third time that one of Spielberg's films became the highest-grossing film ever. Spielberg's next film, Schindler's List, was based on the true story of Oskar Schindler, a man who risked his life to save one, 100 Jews from the Holocaust. Schindler's List earned Spielberg his first Academy Award for Best Director. With the film a huge success at the box office, Spielberg used the profits to set up the Shoah Foundation, a non-profit organization that archives filmed testimony of Holocaust survivors. In 1997, the American Film Institute listed it among the 10 greatest American films ever made which moved up to win the list was remade in 2007. In 1994, Spielberg took a hiatus from directing to spend more time with his family and built his new studio, DreamWorks, with partners Jeffrey Katzenberg and David Geffen. In 1996, he directed the sequel to 1993's Jurassic Park with The Lost World, Jurassic Park, which generated over $618 million worldwide despite mixed reviews, and was the second biggest film of 1997 behind James Cameron's Titanic. His next film, Amistad, was based on a true story, specifically about an African slave rebellion. Despite decent reviews from critics, it did not do well at the box office. Spielberg released Amistad under DreamWorks Pictures, which has produced all of his films from Amistad onwards with the exception of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, The Adventures of Tintin and Ready Player One. His 1998 theatrical release was the World War II film Saving Private Ryan, about a group of U.S. soldiers led by Captain Miller sent to bring home a paratrooper whose three older brothers were killed in the same 24 hours, June 5th to 6th, of the Normandy landing. The film was a huge box office success, grossing over $481 million worldwide and was the biggest film of the year at the North American box office. Spielberg won his second Academy Award for his direction. The film's graphic, realistic depiction of combat violence influenced later war films such as Black Hawk Down and Enemy at the Gates. The film was also the first major hit for DreamWorks, which co-produced the film with Paramount Pictures. Later. Spielberg and John Hanks produced a TV miniseries based on Stephen Ambrose's book Band of Brothers. The 10-part HBO miniseries follows Easy Company of the 101st Airborne Division's 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. The series won a number of awards at the Golden Globes and the Emmys. In 2001, Spielberg filmed fellow director and friend Stanley Kubrick's final project, AI. 
artificial intelligence, which Kubrick was unable to begin during his lifetime. A futuristic film about a humanoid android longing for love, AI, featured groundbreaking visual effects and a multi-layered, allegorical storyline, adapted by Spielberg himself. Though the film's reception in the US was relatively muted, it performed better overseas for a worldwide total box office gross of $236 million. Spielberg and actor Tom Cruise collaborated for the first time for the futuristic neo-noir Minority Report, based upon the science fiction short story written by Philip K. Dick about a Washington, D.C. Police captain in the year 2054 who has been foreseen to murder a man he has not yet met. The film received strong reviews with the review tallying website Rotten Tomatoes giving it a 92% approval rating, reporting that 206 out of the 225 reviews they tally were positive. The film earned over $358 million worldwide. Roger Ebert, who named it the best film of 2002, praised its breathtaking vision of the future as well as for the way Spielberg blended CGI with live action. Spielberg's 2002 film Catch Me If You Can is about the daring adventures of a youthful con artist. It earned Christopher Walken an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. The film is known for John Williams's score and its unique title sequence. It was a hit both commercially and critically. Thank you for watching. Please, subscribe.